Baltimore City Council uh, Ways and Means Committee, uh, we are back in session. Council Bill 22-0235, Ordinance of Estimates for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2023. I'm Eric Costello, Councilman from the 11th District Chair of the Committee. I'm joined to my left by Councilwoman Odette Ramos, 14th District, Councilman John Bullock, 9th District, Council Vice President Sharon Green Middleton, uh, 6th District. Uh, on behalf of Mayor Brandon Scott is Nina Themelis. On behalf of Council President Nick Mosby is Nate Poole. Also joined by Councilman Robert Stokes, 12th District, and Councilman James, uh, member of the committee, and Councilman James Torrance, uh, 7th District. To my immediate right is Matt Peters. We are here for Visit Baltimore. Uh, Mr. Hutchinson, thank you for being with us here today. What I'm going to ask you to do is, number one, uh, tell me the names of all of your staff that you have here in their position title. I understand you have a, a slide deck that you're going to move through pretty quickly, uh, and then we're going to jump right into questions from the council. I also want to acknowledge uh, our deputy mayor for community and economic development, Ted Carter. Mr. Hutchinson, please take it away. And everyone who's speaking, please keep the, the mic about one hand away from, from your mouth so folks can hear at home. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, good afternoon to the committee. Al Hutchinson, President and CEO at Visit Baltimore. And with me is uh, our Chief Financial Officer, Craig Vey. And uh, so we thank you for the opportunity to uh, brief you a little bit in reference to our budget for FY23, but also to give you a really quick oversight as to where we are. We are the official destination marketing organization for Baltimore City, a uh, quasi-city agency, which I serve on the cabinet of Mayor Scott. Um, the sitting mayor, in this case, Mayor Scott, appoints all of Visit Baltimore's board. So needless to say, we're in very close lockstep with Baltimore City and work very closely with Ted Carter and the mayor's administration as well as the council to make sure we're in alignment to market all of Baltimore City. That's our goal and that's what we have been doing at least since my tenure. The good news is the travel and tourism industry is open. The other good news is our convention center is open. It was a field hospital, hospital for two years. So visitors are beginning to come back to Baltimore. Um, just last year, according to Longwoods International, which is an international data company we use, about 24 million people visited Baltimore. We're still down um, from pre-pandemic numbers, but we're on the road to recovery. And that's not a Baltimore issue, that's a national travel issue. And so we're getting close to that. Um, I will tell you the good news as well, from June of this year through December of this year, we have uh, nine convention groups that are what we call citywide conventions that will be meeting in Baltimore City, close to $57 million in economic impact coming into the community. And a lot of these groups were groups that postponed in 2021 due to the pandemic and now are reconvening in Baltimore in 2022. So our convention business is beginning to come back. You also know that in the sports marketing arena, a lot of good news stories are happening there. Last Friday, we announced the AAU Junior Olympics will be bringing their competition to Baltimore beginning in 2028 and 2032. And the main attraction to bring in that event here was Morgan State University's track and field facility. Without that, this event would not be coming to Baltimore. And just yesterday, you heard the news about the CIAA announcing a two-year extension through 2025. And we're very hopeful that in two weeks, FIFA World Cup 2026, we'll get the thumbs up for that. Um, international convention and hopefully Army and Navy football will return to Baltimore and we'll hear that news later on this month as well. So the business is beginning to come back. Our leisure visitors are beginning to come back as well. There's a new term out there called leisure travel where folks are combining business with leisure travel. And so that's one of the strengths of Baltimore that we're seeing. I would just say to you from a marketing communications perspective, our team is continuing to tell the story of diversity here in Baltimore, small business owners, all neighborhoods who have great opportunities to showcase Baltimore City we're promoting and all the new, as you know, products that's coming online. Our team is doing a full job of communicating that. We're very thankful part of the enhanced budget is getting the visitor center reopened. It is open as we speak. We're excited about that because we think that's another gym here in Baltimore City. And I would just say to this committee, Mr. Chair, that equity is very important to our organization at Visit Baltimore. We do it in a number of different ways, from training the industry in diversity, equity, and inclusion. 
We trained the industry doing CIAA uh, for the same, and we just uh, rolled out a warm welcome program here in Baltimore City that really says to businesses, if you want to welcome all people, um, join us because we want to make sure Baltimore is a very ste special destination and warm welcome. So with that, uh, Mr. Chair, I'll pause there for any uh, questions. Thank you, Alex. Good to have two 11th district constituents in the room. Um, want to thank you all for your work at Visit Baltimore. Uh, congratulations on uh, another three years of, of CIAA. Um, I, you know, I think the tournament went well. Didn't, didn't quite hit the, the full stride on the numbers, but I, I know that your team is very active at work um, in terms of thinking how to enhance that experience and drive more traffic to Baltimore. So I appreciate that. And I also, also want to publicly acknowledge and thank you for your efforts to get the Baltimore Visitor Center, um, which is also in the 11th District, reopened. I, I deeply appreciate that. Take a moment to uh, acknowledge Councilman Mark Conway, uh, 4th District. Um, with that, I'm just going to start down on this side, Council Vice President. I have no questions, but you know, I applaud all of the efforts and, and work that you've done through COVID and now moving forward and uh, looking forward to continued success with your organization and all the things that you continue to do to, to promote Baltimore because we truly are a, a city with lots of history, lots of just um, fun work and play. So um, thank you for uh, continuing to be the lead in um, pushing things forward with your organization. Thank you very much, Councilwoman. We've also been joined by Councilman Ryan Dorsey, third district member of the committee. Councilman Conway? Councilwoman o uh, Ramos? I almost called you Councilwoman Odette. <laughs> Stokes does that to me all the time. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you so much for being here. I know. Um, the last year's hearing, um, I know I had expressed concerns about um, not actually marketing the entire city, but I see in the guide um, a much better job in doing that, so thank you very much. Um, I did notice that most of the photos in the guide um, have captions on them, and then when you open the first one, the table of contents has a mural in my district that does not have a citation or a, or a um, caption as to where that beautiful mural is. So I'm kind of hoping that um, because that beautiful mural on Greenmount Avenue is one of the most important things right now for our for Greenmount Avenue. We want people to come here. Obviously, Red Emma's coming is a big deal. Um, so hopefully, in your next versions, when you do this mural, that it will be captioned properly. No, thank you. We'll, we'll do that for sure. Yeah, thank I you appreciate for it. That the out. second question I had was. Um, I'm looking at the, f first of all, can we, can we get copies of these each time oh, you? Ab absolutely you can. That and would be super helpful yeah. because then obviously we get to visit the rest of our own city, right? And we can promote sure. these things. But also it's always good to know what you are saying about our city externally. Um, so if you don't mind just sticking a few in our, in our boxes. Yeah, we'll make sure the entire council gets those uh, copies for sure. That would be super helpful. Did I need to make that a formal request? Say that one more time. I I'm just want these given to us each time they publish them. I'm going to trust Al at his word. We don't need to okay, add just... another item to our spreadsheet. <laughs> Done. Um, no, I appreciate it. The, sec the other question is um, I see under the um, – uh, luckily, Baltimore has like really amazing, awesome small businesses that are doing really just uh, offer so many rich things. And I know you can't um, put them all in in every magazine. Um, I have, as I was saying earlier, I have 10 bookstores in my district and I just see one featured here um, under the shopping and services. Do you kind of have a rotation? How does this well, let me, work? Let me speak to that. That's a great question, Councilman Ramos. Every, article, every issue we have, we target a special subject matter. Okay. We've done ones on small businesses. We'll continue to do that, continue to highlight small businesses throughout the city. Um, and we try to come up with a special t uh, topic. We've done some on technology, right? on history, arts and history. Okay. So we will, I mean, your question is right on the money. We wanna make sure we're highlighting our small businesses, but we do have a, a special subject matter and, and certain guides that we really highlight small businesses throughout the city. Well, I'm just looking at the, the, the listing at the back, best get, get away, let's see, where is it? It's on uh, C and Do, sports, and then bookstore, it's in the back. 
No, I'm not looking at it, but so I'll take your word for it. So do you have like a, there doesn't seem to be a theme here. Um, do we, uh, and then how do we make sure that, you know, some of our folks get included in this? This is the, this is the back page section okay. here. Um, well, again, we partner with um, the media company to reach out to different stakeholders. Our marketing, internal marketing team is a part of it as well. But to your point, we can't put everybody in every issue, right? Sure. But we're going to do our best job to be very inclusive. We start from that point, being inclusive all the time. But I will definitely get back with our marketing communications team and take back your messaging about highlighting uh, small businesses, particularly you, in your district. Um, do you partner with the Main Streets? Because the Main Streets. Oh, ab absolutely. Absolutely, we do. And that's another issue that we put in the visitor's eye. What we need to do is make sure we get you a copy of the guide so you can see what we're doing on an annualized that's basis. That's what I'm asking, so that yeah. we're you know, always in tune with what you're planning on and how Absolutely. The main streets are very much a part of our storytelling. We work with them very closely. Um, as I always say, visit Baltimore. We don't own any product in Baltimore. So our job is to tell the stories of the main streets, tell the jobs of the small businesses. So I'll make sure we get you copies, future copies of, and in fact, I can get with our marketing and communications team to share with you what our plans are with future uh, guides that's coming down the road. Well, I, I think that if we just get a copy each quarter that you're sending these out, that would be fine. Oh, sh absolutely. You will definitely get that. That's done. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Block. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good afternoon. Um, you mentioned, uh, obviously, the CIAA, and I think that was a really huge uh, impact for our city. Um, but also attached to that is the, um, the work around the arena. Can you talk about um, the redevelopment of the arena and how you think that may uh, play into uh, what we can do in the city in terms of Visit Baltimore? Well, first of all, it, it steps our game up in the sports marketing space, but also in the faith-based space, because a lot of our uh, religious conventions, they can utilize a space like Royal Farms Arena. but. Um, that's going to really help us to attract even more events to the city. Everything I'm hearing, Royal Farms Arena is on time with deliverables. As we know, the CIAA will be the first event in Royal Farms Arena. Um, it's going to be higher capacity, more suites available. That's appealing to the CIAA's folks. But I think more than that, Councilman, that this will put us in a better position to attract even more larger sporting events, obviously concerts. But uh, the faith-based market is one that I don't take it. We don't want to take that lightly because there are huge faith-based conventions that need arena space like Royal Farms Arena. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Councilman Dorsey. Thank you. Excellent. Appreciate uh, everything you all are doing. Oh, Council Vice President Milton. I just want to add, as um, Councilwoman Ramos was going through the magazine, I'm like, oh, you have Sankofa Children's Museum in the district, which, in, which is in uh, on Pimlico, which is a awesome children's museum if you haven't been there. And sure. I'm so glad you kind of have that in there. And the Silver and Arboretum and just some of the places that are outside of the downtown city limits. And that, that helps to bring that equity lens Absolutely. around the whole complete Baltimore city. Yeah. So thank you for... Uh, all those added things. And Mr. Chair, if I could just add, because I think Councilman Ramos' question is on the money. We need your eyes and ears, too, to see where we need to fill gaps, right? Because we're not perfect, but we want to be a, a, the full story. So help us when you see something. Let us know, and we will do our part to be inclusive for sure. Are you connecting with the things that are going to be happening with Pimlico Racetrack and the, when they, as they change that and they're going to make it um, really Bible for the community, festivals, yes, markets. I mean, it's. That's going to be another attraction for us to tell that story for sure. Year round, not just for yes. race day. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Excellent. Uh, we are now in recess. We'll be back in the next couple of minutes for Department of Transportation. Thank you.